snake you see is called the Mozambique Spitting Cobra. Very good at spitting venom. Through the fang, makes a 90 degree bend. So the exit orifice faces forward. They've got large muscles over the venom gland that will then squeeze that venom gland, forcing venom through that fang. Good day, my name is Mike Perry from the company African Reptiles and Venom. Today we're going to look at the dangerous snakes found in Gauteng. Okay, the snake you see is called uh, Black Mamba. Now you notice that the color is actually uh, light or dark gray, light or dark brown, can even be reddish brown. Inside of the mouth is black. Okay. And that's what you're going to see. The snake opens that mouth, you'll see that black mouth. Very powerful neurotoxic venom. This snake has fixed front fangs. It does not spit venom. The mambas are active in the day. They uh, wake up about seven o'clock in the morning and they start their day with a one to one and a half hour warming up, basking. Once they've uh, warmed up, then off they go, they go hunting. They are primary hunters of warm-blooded prey. So rodents and birds is what they feed on mostly. And these snakes have short fixed front fangs. You can see what the mouth looks like. A very potent neurotoxic venom. This uh, venom contains neurotoxins of both alpha and beta neurotoxins that work in synergy to cause paralysis. One of the main features of this bait early stages would be tingling. Tingling around the bite side, tingling around the lips, metallic taste in the mouth, you get tingling in the, uh, in the fingers, toes, Right, you develop ptosis, droopy eyelids, and uh, the venom cause, causes a flooding of the nervous system with neurotransmitter that results in uh, saliva running out of your mouth, tremendous sweating, and later on, fasciculations, muscle tremors. Paralysis from this snake can be a uh, flaccid paralysis, it could also start with shaking, just like somebody that has an epileptic fit and uh, you are paralyzed. Okay. Your arms and legs are, uh, spa uh, are spastic, so you're unable to move around in that condition. Symptoms happen very quickly. And um, in a serious mamba bite, you can have breathing difficulties within uh, 45 minutes and uh, very soon you'll become unconscious and uh, then death will set in. Now, mambas don't cause many snake bites. Despite their bad reputation, they cause very few snake bites. So they don't feature in snake bites. They try and avoid contact with people but the bite is very deadly. They, uh, mambas and dogs are really the ones that, uh, that mix and uh, many dogs get uh, bitten by mambas and many dogs also die from the uh, very potent venom before the dog is able to reach the hospital. This guy is seeing himself there and then he's uh, opening his mouth and right, so if you look at the distribution of uh, mambas you find them in the northern coastal part of the eastern cape through KwaZulu Natal, Mpumalanga, Limpopo, northwest and in the northern border of Gauteng where it borders the Limpopo province that's where you find black mambas in uh, Gauteng so they do occur here but just a very limited distribution. The snake you see is called the Mozambique Spitting Cobra. This one is a very light brown. 
in normally darker brown. The interstitial skin is black, so you get a net effect on the body. The underside can be pink, yellow or apricot color with a number of dark bands on the throat. Mozambique spitting cobras are very good at spitting venom. As I said, the, uh, the canal that goes through the fang makes a 90 degree bend uh, before the tip. So the exit orifice faces forward. They've got large muscles over the venom gland that will then squeeze that venom gland, forcing venom through that fang and sprays towards you. When you get the venom in the eyes, venom in the eyes causes instant burning pain. You there rubbing your eyes, the snake has sprayed venom, has stopped you in your tracks, and it turns around and flees away. So a very good defense from a distance. The venom is cytotoxic. The venom, cytotoxic venom in the eye will cause immediate pain and burning. The bite from the snake will cause pain and swelling. So the syndrome is described as painful progressive swelling syndrome. Swelling from these bites are not as uh, fast as we get in puffed bites where they, the swelling can travel at up to 10 centimeters in an hour. With spitting cobras, the swelling normally travels about 1 to 2 centimeters per hour. Um, the venom attacks the skin and subcutaneous fatty layer and destroys you know, that skin, leaving you with a necrotic wound that needs to be debrided about a week after the bite and then the doctor will do a split skin graft over the wound. These bites are rarely deadly. There's potential that a child could die from the bite, but in adults, if there is a death, it will probably be secondary caused by an infection. So you might get septic shock if you don't uh, look after the wound. Very, very common cobras, these. They can be active in the day, but they're more active at night. It's a medium-sized cobra. They do not reach two meters in length. The maximum is 195 centimeters. But most often they're a snake of about 1.2 to 1.5 meters in length. They occur in KwaZulu-Natal, Mpumalanga, Limpopo, Northwest, Gauteng, and then if you go further out of the country, you find them in uh, Botswana, in the uh, in, um, northern part of Namibia, uh, through Zimbabwe, Mozambique, from the south to the north, and then you also get them in Zambia, the eastern parts of Zambia. So there we go, there's a big spitting cobra, very, very common cobra. This is the main culprit of snake bites in South Africa. These snakes have a bad habit of actually biting people while they are sleeping. And that's why they feature in a lot of snake bites. Okay, the snake you see is called a Rinkels. The name Rinkels comes from the Dutch Rinkels, which means ring neck. And that's because of the white marking on the neck. Like a ring on the neck. Okay. These snakes are elapids. They have fixed front fangs. So they are uh, proteroglyph snakes. They also have the ability to spit venom. Runkel's method of spitting is different than that of a spitting cobra. Uh, in the spitting cobra, the fang is very mobile. The maxilla is able to move that fang to direct the venom stream. With the runkels, the fang is relatively immobile. And so in order for the snake to direct the venom, the snake will firstly rear up, make a hood. And then when it wants to spray the venom, it is going to firstly tilt the head, look straight up into the sky. Then the venom starts spraying and the snake lunges forward. And uh, what you then get is a spray pattern of two parallel vertical streams of venom. So that's how they spray venom. 
Spinning carbons can spray from a uh, confined space, whereas the Runkholz is very limited in its ability to spray from confined space, uh, although some people have had accidents with them. Um, these snakes are diurnal, they're active in the day, uh, and they also differ from the Cobras in three ways. Firstly, the maxilla of the Runkholz only carries the fang. Maxilla of a Cobra carries the fang and one or two small teeth behind the fang. Uh, Runkholz has keeled body scales. If you look at the scales, you'll see that each scale has a little stripe on it. That's a keel on the scale. Right. Cobras have smooth scales. Thirdly, Runkholz is a live bearing snake. Cobras lay eggs. So those are the three differences. That's why this snake is in its own genus, Hemocartus. A very common snake. They are found in the uh, Western Cape, eastwards in the Eastern Cape, and then northwards through KwaZulu Natal, the Free State, high felt regions of Northwest, Gauteng, and Mpumalanga. Preferred habitat for this snake is open, high lying grasslands that get cold, frosty winters. So they prefer that type of habitat where you get those cold winters. These snakes do not feature in snake bite. We have recorded very, very few bites from the runcals. Um, these bites are normally inflicted on snake handlers. Um, this snake has a habit of playing dead. If you annoy the snake or it can't get its way with spraying, the spraying doesn't get the snake what it wants to achieve to get you away, then the snake is going to play dead. Not sure if we can get this one to go and play dead. Let's see. It's going to play dead. And we can see inside the mouth. We can't see the fang because the fang is enclosed in a mucous membrane. I'll just print them out to you where they are. So there's a fang over here. There you saw some venom go there. There's another fang over there. Very short fangs, but they're effective. They do what they need to do. Um, the distribution is from the Western Cape through the Eastern Cape. Uh, then northwards through the Free State. The Kuzuna uh, Hotel, and then in Mapumalanga, uh, northwest Gauteng. And the preferred habitat is open, high lying grasslands that get cold, frosty winters. In terms of color varieties, let me just discuss that with you. The one you see is the one we get on the high felt. When they're young, they are gray, and as they grow bigger, they start going darker, and you can get them pitch black. In the Eastern Cape, you get them. Very handsome snakes, they have dark and light bands, so orange and black, or yellow and black. Very beautiful pattern on the back. Right, let's put the snake back. The next snake I want to show you is called the Bibrin's stiletto snake. These snakes are very common in Southern Africa. And here we can see what the snake looks like. They normally dark brown or black, very shiny skin. The belly can be light or dark. Right. When you disturb the snake, you see the snake points his head down and it arches the neck. That is the strike position for a stiletto snake. These snakes are unique in the way that they bite. They don't bite like normal snakes by opening the mouth and then biting down. So you get pinching of the uh, the upper and lower jaw. That's not how they bite. These snakes have long fangs for that little small head. 
the fangs are on a mobile maxilla. So these snakes have relatively long hinge front fangs, like adders and vipers. But the maxilla is not as mobile as the adders or vipers. So with these snakes, what happens is when they want to bite, the bottom jaw moves in, the fang points out of the bottom of the jaw like that, the tip is facing the rear, and then the snake will make a sideways swipe to either to the right or to the left, wherever it sees movement. And using a single fang, the snake is going to gaff you with that fang. And once it's gaffed, it will twist the neck to hold on and inject venom. So that's the method of biting. Once again, you can see how the snake is arching the neck like that. So that neck arch shows you the snake is preparing for a strike. So it's either going to strike to the left or to the right. And there it did strike. It's lightning fast. Can't believe that they can strike so fast. Just a quick gaff. There it is again. Quick gaff. Uh, these snakes are fossorial. They live underground. And uh, underground they are looking for uh, lizards and other snakes and small uh, newborn mice that they feed on. Uh, these snakes are very, very common. As soon as we get our first spring rain, these snakes come out by their hundreds. And all of a sudden, the bites from these snakes just increase. Uh, it's a major, major culprit in snake bite in quite a few places in South Africa. Around Durban, it's a major culprit. Uh, around Horibus Bodam in the northwest, it's a uh, main culprit of snake bite. In the Northern Cape, at the Sishan Mine, there's a little town called Katu, most common snake bite there. So, Bibrin's stiletto snake. Uh, venom is cytotoxic. The bite causes pain and swelling. And um, it has a fairly potent uh, cytotoxic effect. Uh, one in four bites on the tip of the finger, you'll end up with an amputation of that last digit of the finger. So 25%. Uh, amputation rate from these uh, tip of finger bites from these stiletto snakes. There's a component in the venom called seraphotoxins. Seraphotoxins are very powerful vasoconstrictors. They attack the coronary artery, causing it to spasm, causing um, reduced or no blood flow into the heart muscle. So you get a heart attack from the bite from the snake. Our stiletto snakes have small quantities of venom. They just have small venom glands in the head, so they are not deadly. If you go further north, in Africa and into the Middle East, you get stiletto snakes that grow longer than a meter, that have long venom glands that lie in the neck region. They have a higher volume of venom. They can inject more seraphotoxins, and those stiletto snakes are deadly. In Israel, they make an antivenom for their deadly stiletto snake. So that's the stiletto snake. This one is the Bibrin's stiletto snake.